it's a property that's been um, inherited um, by the daughter of the, of the prior owner and uh, they've had some problems with the building whilst the mother was in it and we've been calling to look at them and generally find out what they are. Uh, what is interesting is that this building um, underwent a uh, uh, sort of ener energy efficiency upgrade scheme. They got a, a, a grant from the uh, government and they had solar, solar panels installed in the roof which you can just see behind me here and they've also had some improvements undertaken internally to the ventilation and stuff and insulation. I'm going to show you some of these because they're a, um, a little bit unusual. So on the outside of the building we do have a small problem with damp internally directly adjacent to that rainwater downpipe there. And you can see that downpipe services the gutters and drops into the ground absent from the connection of a gully. So always suspicious of this sort of scenario where you never know where that rainwater is draining to. Um, I'll just take you inside. Now, just on the inside, this is a kitchen extension. You can see here that there isn't really any significant damage to the um, wall or plaster. But if you look carefully, you can see we've got weevil infestation to the bottom of the skirting boards there and the moisture content of the floor just in this region is a little bit high so it's about 4.55% moisture content of the floor and the skirting boards vary and they, 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 they reduce here and then peak and then trough again here uh, to around about 24% wood moisture content and when we use the moisture meter in scan mode that's beneath the surface plaster, we can pick up a little profile just peaking in the middle of the wall. And that's directly opposite that rainwater downpipe. So what we have done is we've dropped a camera down the downpipe and we found a really unorthodox connection um, between two sections of rainwater downpipe in the ground where water is escaping. Um, I haven't got the camera set up now, but I'll drop a couple of pictures somewhere up here in the corner so you can see that. So that's a relatively easy thing to to look at and diagnose. Um, you can see we've had some ventilation improvements. These were undertaken by a company who installed the solar panels and improved the insulation. Now that's a fan installed to the kitchen. And no, I didn't put that grill on sideways. That's the install. Let's just have a look at this insulation. Look, we've got a little switch in the, in the kitchen unit to operate the fan. It's not the most considerate of installations, is it? Now, building regulations would require that fan there to achieve 30 litres per second given its location. Okay, we've tested the fan with an anometer and that's achieving 15 litres per second. So it's doing half of what's required by the building regs. Okay, we've also, one second, we've also got another fan which has been installed into the bathroom. Again, uh, System 1 Ventaxia. There we go. Um, now that fan should operate with the light switch which is here um, but nothing happens when we take the uh, when we take the face plate off you can see that the fan's not moving now there is power to the fan so why that's not working we don't know I suspect it's shorting out now the distance of that that fan exhaust goes out to the rear wall of the property which is through here it's about 3.1 meters and I will drop some images up in the corner of the fan of the fan installation. You can have a look at the ductwork there, um, which is really, really, really poor. Um, then, in addition to those upgrades, the insulation upgrades and the, the fan upgrades, they installed some retrofit trickle vents to the windows. Now, I've never seen these trickle vents before, so I'm going to show you them to see if you've noticed them. And here we go. These are a retrofit installed trickle vent. Now what they are is they're a, like a sliding plastic um, grill. You can see that there when I move that up and down, it opens and shuts a flap which seals against the frame. And if you look at them, there's a little wedge there which sits between the window sash and the frame. And what that's doing, you can look at the frame here, or the sash, sorry, it's right tight to the frame and then obviously where you've got these trickle vents, it's actually forcing the sash off the frame to create a small gap. And that gap is intended to allow air to flow between the frame and the sash. So it's effectively prizing the sash open. And then that lever there is designed to uh, to close that gap. 
I am certainly not impressed by that. Why they haven't gone with a standard trickle vent design, I have no idea. There's no markings on them. These are, an, the, you can just see there, they're air box. There's no markings on them. We'll uh, tell you what the free equivalent area of the trickle vents are, so we don't know how much air they're supposed to let through. But let me just show you the outside as well. The outside, what they've done is this rubber gasket here is designed to seal the sash to the frame. And as you can see where the vents are, they've actually cut the rubber gasket out to encourage more air movement around. And you can just see there where the frame and the sash have been forced apart by that little lug, which is sat on the back of the trickle vent. Really, really unusual. Never seen them before. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed by the trickle vent installation. I'm not impressed by the fan installation or the duct work. Um, and this is work that's been undertaken by um, an energy company. Um, I won't name them. Um, an energy company to improve the energy efficiency of the building. It was all government grant funded due to the condition of the building prior and the age of the, uh, of the occupant. Um, I think it's a very good demonstration as to what happens when we get these government incentives where there's a drive to increase the energy efficiency of buildings, energy efficiency of buildings, sorry, um, where you get um, companies starting up, um, there's no regulation, very little training to the staff, and they come along, they're devising these schemes of repair, and as you can see, they're, they're just really poorly executed. So anyway, I thought that might be interesting, particularly the trickle vents and the fan installation. Um, I haven't shown you them, but I'll put the pictures on the screen and you can have a look at exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that's for me for today. Thanks very much. Enjoy your week. Bye-bye.